All right, we're back a few weeks later to come back and do the other DLC, which promises to be of different scale and hopefully doesn't inspire me to start writing thousands of words about it in an attempt to do an essay that may or may not come out <laughs> because I can't keep t I can't keep stacking these. I need to finish things at some point. But I think this one's like a like a mystery or something. I need extra review in my quest log. No, there. Ada has a new Aetherwave drama ready to watch. Ada has the latest Halcyon Helen Aetherwave ready to watch. Speak with her when you're ready to sit back, relax, and enjoy show. Welcome back, Captain. How can I be of assistance? You mentioned an Aetherwave drama? I'd like to see it. Certainly, Captain. I was hoping you would ask. was the law forsaken parasites. I had become obsessed. The my quest Hale. to stop them. To avenge my partner, Philip. And my ex-partner, Bernice. And Lieutenant Jurgen. And those two informants had brought me to Rizzo's distillery. But it wasn't just the triple distilled deliciousness of Rizzo Spectrum brand vodka that I found there. It was death. I made sure the brain eaters paid the price. But at what cost to me? Communication coming in from one Administrator Ludovico. Get off the transmission, Cedric. We agreed to let me do the negotiating. Law be with you, friend. I am Administrator Ludovico of the famed Eridanos Atmospheric Complex. But there's no need to stand on formality. You may address me as Mr. Let's drop all of the, uh, the formality. Call me a title. Let me guess, this is about Halcyon Helen's murder. Her death is the tragedy of our lifetime. As the face of our new product line, her murder is a stain on the Rizzo's brand. She was scheduled to unveil our newest product, Spectrum Brown, before this tragic event. But we cannot move forward with our unveiling until we apprehend the killer. So is she actually dead? Like, <laughs> seemed like it was just part of the show, wasn't it? <laughs> And your first thought was to come to me? All right, Ludovico, that's enough. You don't know what you're doing. Let me handle this. Captain Hawthorne, Sublight's favorite freelancer. I'm such an admirer of your work. Cedric King Cannon, Sublight Underground. I'm so glad we're hiring a third party investigator. No one wants to see a troop of UDL guards stomping all over my hotel, least of all me. The murder of Halcyon Helen is a heinous assault on this colony. I look forward to watching you find the miscreant responsible and drag them out of the shadows. <laughs> Helen, I 
I was shaken by the news myself. Helen brought a lot of joy to this colony. I've literally never encountered Halcyon Helen before. She's on those posters. She's the blonde lady on those posters of like Pulp Fiction, but like I don't think you can encounter it in any of that in any way, really. And I'm not a... I don't, I don't have a backstory of being a member of this colony before the game started either. I came out of a pod. I'm having trouble seeing the death of a tubid actor as an assault on the colony. It's because it's propaganda. Tubid actor. Oh, Captain. This isn't Spencer Woolrich we're talking about. This is Halcyon Helen, Princess of Periodicals, Duchess of Dramaturgy. You would not believe the money she made us on Dissident Busters. For law's sake, Cedric, could you show a little discretion and not bring up your contraband operations in front of an outsider? Ludovico, you wound me. I'm establishing rapport with our new contractor. Let's not give him the impression that you can't be trusted. Do you really want to do this right now, Cedric? You want to antagonize me while I'm negotiating a contract. Because I promise you, I'll win. Oh my god, just fuck already. Uh, dissident busters, so she made prop- she did make propaganda films. I mean, of course they do. All the art is gonna be propaganda, basically. That's corporation involved, but that's like directly like the worst kind. Gentlemen, please, as far as I'm concerned, you're both idiots. First sensible thing I've heard all day. Oh god, there's oh, more. Uh, my apologies, Mr. Ludovico. That was unprofessional of me. Captain, I'm Constable Maria Keene. Hiring a third-party investigator was my idea. I've been studying your dossier. You're reliable and competent. You've been taking care of yourself ever since you arrived on Halcyon. And you're entirely independent. As far as I'm concerned, you're the ideal inspector for this case. First test of whether or not you're trustworthy. If if your entire colony is dying of a plague, but the only medicine that I can find is from a different c company, uh, do I need to shoot you because you won't use it? <laughs> uh. Just how many people are involved in this communication? Just the three of us. Just the three? No one else is going to jump in here unexpectedly? You must excuse us. The situation on Eridanos is tense. If we don't bring Helen's killer to justice, this scandal could scupper our entire operation. Please, Captain. I'm asking you to help us. While you're pursuing your investigation, we'll make you a guest of honor at the Grand Colonial. I'll come lounge around and then decide. I encourage you to consider this offer seriously. The future of our complex may depend on your success. I'll leave you in the constable's care. Mr. Kincannon and I must have a word. Fine. Mud Rizzo's is paying for that hotel room. I can't tell you how grateful I am for your help. And even though they may not show their gratitude, I know Administrator Ludovico and Mr. Kincannon appreciate your involvement. Mr. Kincannon could lose his spaceport if board authorities took over the investigation. And if Rizzo's is forced to cancel its unveiling, we might never recover. We just need to give those two 20 minutes to work out their, uh, kinks. Helen must have been pretty popular if her death could put an end to your operations. Helen was more than popular. She gave something to this colony that no product line could ever provide. Real happiness. No one has ever been as well known or as well loved. Uh, outside of our courageous business leaders. You sound a bit worn out. Me? Worn out? <laughs> Perish the notion. My days are filled with catering to the oh-so-reasonable requests of Mr. Ludovico and Mr. Kincannon. What's not to like? They seem like jackasses. Your words, not mine. Please don't take my lack of disagreement as anything other than fatigue. I am a content, productive, and happy member of our society. God, this world. <laughs> Those two seem to have some issues. The administrator oversees Rizzo's operations. Cedric runs the hotel and the spaceport. 
they're always at each other's throats. My life would be so much easier if they'd simply learned to work together. You seem competent. You could have dealt with this. I represent the law, Captain. But what's happening between Mr. Kincannon and the Administrator is... politics. Politics are not my area of expertise. The law is simple. Politics are complicated. Relax, they're nothing I can't handle. I'm pleased to hear that. From everything I've heard, you're a competent freelancer. And at the risk of sounding impertinent, we desperately need the help of someone competent. Thank you for your time, Captain. Whenever you're ready, I've authorized the Unreliable to land at the Grand Colonial. All right, I got everything I need. Transmission terminated. Captain, we are now cleared to land at the Eridanos Atmospheric Complex. Little do they know the last person that hired me, I killed. And then I loaded a save and then ran away from her to try to quote unquote spare her. But then the story basically still continued like she was dead, but maybe without the one of line of dialogue about her being dead. I don't know why they're trusting me to catch Halcyon, Helen's killer. There are several reasons why someone would hire your services. In descending order of likelihood, they are as follows. Desperation, confusion, mistaken identity, inebriation, and genuine faith in your abilities. What can you tell me about Eridanos? Eridanos is a hydrogen helium gas giant, distinguished by a well-defined ring system. The Eridanos Atmospheric Complex is a system of land masses propelled through a thin layer of the upper atmosphere, where humans are potentially capable of surviving. Wow. Encouraging. Thanks, Ada. I love potentially surviving. Eridanos. Recently famous for Halcyon Helen's death. How exciting. I, I don't think they're going to add that to their motto. Oh, I forgot you could just go over here. More or less. Chicka dicka dicka dicka. Who am I taking on this adventure? Not either of the people for the last one. Gotta try to care about anyone besides Parvati sometimes. Kind of only have to exclude one person too, because Sam's basically not a character. It's between Ellie and Neokia and Vicar. Hmm. What is she holding? Just kind of registering that. I'm like, what is she holding? Well, you're a doctor. That seems useful in an investigation. And you're a douchebag, so... <laughs> I don't know. I'm trying to remember how much they even developed N Nioka, because you got her, like, last. I feel like they didn't go that much of anywhere. These two... Nioka could foil off of either of the other two characters, but that's also somewhat falsely assuming they're going to interact all that much. I feel like Vicar and Ellie interacting is kind of boring. We'll see. up we're here i guess i need to do some maintenance on you guys don't i like they're robots two perk points available shots from ellie's ability ricochet to a second nearby ability that's kind of cool get back up when you're downed her effects last longer more threat generated reduced threat generated Range damage. Ability damage. Hmm. Threat generated gives me an edge during fights so that I don't just get murdered by all the random stuff that's happening, basically. Which can come in handy. 
the damage just helps them pump it out too. Honestly, though, yeah, generating threats is like one of the only things that they do that's really worth it. They don't really have much utility, so they might as well just make sure they're uh, getting shot before I do. She already has the 10% do. <clears throat> she already has the 10% damage. Bonus damage to creatures, like a lot. Let's do higher ability damage. It's really funny that you can get both of these. It doesn't it doesn't remove the other one, so you can just completely fuck up your character. Yeah, bonus damage versus creatures is a lot. Potench. Let's see. A 1000 damage gun. 1250. Definitely wish I had brought more of those miniguns around. Oh, there's one. But I should get more over the course of the DLC. Assuming combat's gonna happen much? Potentially doesn't have to. It's an investigation that might surprise me. Weapon ranged. Mixed is a huge waste of time. Aggressive. Yeah, ranged and aggressive. It just doesn't make sense to do otherwise. Uh, the melee weapons are just kind of dumb, <laughs> and the the values you get for these miniguns are so cartoonishly strong that you're like, why would I not? Please murder everything for me. Watch out! This place is half sublight thugs and half top rungers on vacation. Both are dangerous. Okay. Hello, hello, hello there. Hope your atmospheric entry wasn't too troublesome. As a guest of honor, you deserve the best in comfort. Sublight Salvage and Shipping Underground, or Slug, as we like to call ourselves, is delighted to welcome you to Eridanos. I'm the Grand Colonial Head Bellhop. I'm here to grab your bags and direct you, the inspector, to the Grand Ballroom, which was the scene of the crime. Can you fill me in on the details of the murder? I can try. I was the one who found Helen's body in the Grand Ballroom. Corpse wasn't in the best shape. Aside from that, I don't know a whole lot. Helen was supposed to host the unveiling for Rizzo's newest product, Spectrum Brown. Until you catch the killer, the unveiling has been indefinitely postponed. Helen's death has been a shock for many. A lot of people are inconsolable. Hell. Even Black Hole Birdie, Helen's bow, has wandered off. Some folks think he had something to do with the murder, but I don't believe it. He did it. It's always the boyfriend. We should ask if they're comping the minibar. This might take a while if you get me. Ah, I like where your head's at. These things take time. Weeks, I'd wager. Folks get heated when it comes to serials and their actors, I suppose. It was you. You're the killer. You found the body. Boom. Open and shut case. Got it. This is why I got the best ending in uh, Paranormal Agent. Para. What was that game called? The pink one. <laughs> Shit. It had Shinji in it. <laughs> was she a divisive figure? Not particularly. But I think some folks were jealous of her success, or otherwise viewed her as a threat. Reckon how she came about her fame didn't help. How'd she get so famous? Why, she was a natural. People fell in love with her. She managed to wrangle up a following all on her own. She ended up about as famous and high-runged as your average VP, which rubbed a lot of Byzantines the wrong way. Actors ain't supposed to get preferential treatment. Let's see here. Oh, I already spoke briefly about the Spectrum unveiling, or lack thereof. It's still an awful shame. A lot of folks looking forward to that. I thought you worked for Slug, not Rizzo's. I do. Rizzo's happened to rent out the Grand Colonial Ballroom from Slug for the unveiling. A nice mutually beneficial event. 
But the murder's gone and ruined that, along with nine out of ten of my favorite cereals. Anyway, I think I've held you up long enough. Once you're ready, head down to the lobby. The ballroom is just behind the elevators. Meanwhile, I'll grab your bags. I don't need you to take any bags. You're certain? All right, then. Guess we can probably set you up with some spare uniforms if you must yours. Oh my god, the lightning bolt thing on his head. <laughs> that helmet. It's just so just much. Said, we aren't allowed to the complex is on complete lockdown. No one's allowed in or out until the murder investigation's concluded. Do you have any idea who I am? I could bury you under six tons of paperwork before you had the time to cry out for your supervisor. I'm sure you could, but we fed our last box of grievance forms into the incinerator a few months ago. Is there anything I can do for you in the meantime? I cannot believe this. <laughs> you could file a complaint, but all of the forms are gone, so I, I guess you can't file a complaint, actually. I guess... Uh, uh fuck you. <laughs> this is my number one weapon? This is my super gun? Losing track of where everything is. Alright, I, I gotta fix this. Because this is a murder mystery. Uh, Outer Worlds How to Hide Weapon. Press and hold R. There we go. I spent the whole last DLC thing like, I think there's a way to hide it. But I can't remember. I kept not quite getting around to looking it up, but I was mostly in the... out in the wild and shit. But like, this feels like it's gonna be like a talk to people kind of expansion. Which is usually for the best. That's what I wish most of the, more of this game was. Uh, but I desperately need to not... I, it's weird to point a gun at everybody you talk to. In one of these games, it feels odd. Anything to check out around here? I'm pretty happy working for Slug. Mr. Kincannon treats us with respect. Does he? Or is that like Any comparative? Idea how many bits I've spent at the Grand Colonial? Is my patronage worth nothing to you? I'm sure you've spent a lot, sir, but unfortunately, we can't make any exceptions. Can't make any exceptions. In Byzantium, those words would be a criminal offense. Shame we're not in Byzantium. She is so not dealing with him, and it's great. Because he is exhausting. Look at his hat. God, he's an exhausting person. He says patronage. He pronounces it patronage. What the fuck? I hate him. <laughs> Instantly. Where'd this go? Alright, have one of your patented elevator conversations. Oh. I guess this is a Mass Effect. I'll just sit in silence. Greetings, Inspector. No need to check in here. Your paperwork has all been processed. You should be able to find the Colonial right ahead. Is that your boss that looks like a villain? Does he know he looks like a villain? Did he want to look like a villain? I see they hired the Outer Worlds loading screen artist <laughs> to make the art of this room. <laughs> Fancy place. I hope they're not expecting us to pay. No, nope, that's not the sitch. Purpleberry Budge, a soft sour candy shell around a sweet purpleberry flavored center. Suck it, chew it, you can do it. Good old purpleberry. Why does this just stop here? Is it like a a rail? That's a harsh up and down drop on each side if you are meant to be able to drive across. Which you'd kind of think because they meet up in the middle. What'd you erase? Can't read those documents. Somebody was doing a... playing a card game. Bridge that goes all the way up there. I briefly thought they were going to do like cool gravity stuff when I saw this going down like this. Like we we're going to be walking on a curved planet like in Outer Wilds. I don't think I want a bar that knocks me out. That's a little terrifying. I'm pretty happy working for Slug. Mr. Kincannon treats us with respect. 
Ah, well, it's creepy how you're saying the same line as the other person with the same inflection and everything, but you're a new person. Kind of makes me feel like you're, uh, all conditioned to say that in a creepy way. I always feel that it's like a bit of a missed opportunity whenever... Whenever they take the effort to write... They take the effort to voice all these different characters, like the random people in the crowd and whatnot. But they give them the same dialogue. It's like you... I f like you couldn't write a, a different line, so for the other actor to say, because it's really weird when they say different when they say the same thing. I can't believe someone so famous as Halcyon Helen could meet a fate like this. It really is a terrible shame. I absolutely adored her serials. I almost can't imagine someone wretched enough to do such a thing. You don't think a dissident could be here, do you? Get a hold of yourself. The administrator would never allow someone as dangerous as a dissident here. Eridanos is safe. This is all just a terrible coincidence. Of course, of course, you are absolutely right. I think the idea of a psychopath wandering among us is just making me nervous. It could be a dissident. You can't know the contents of another's mind. Anyone here could be a dissident. You know, how would you keep them out? The question is whether or not I'd end up siding with the dissident, if there is one. But no, it's probably a rival. A lover? A rival? Some corporate person that wanted the show taken down for some reason? But now that it's been postponed, I'll never get a chance to show it off. My law, that is a real tragedy. It's so much worse than the death that happened. If it's brown, drink it down. Wow, don't... Please don't make your drink slogan a riff on... Uh... Toilets. It's fucking yellow, mellow, or if it's brown, flush it down. Don't, don't riff your... Oh my god. Why would you do that? Hi. I was going to wash my hands, I swear! I... I was nearly attacked by a terror ray on my way here. That's terrible. Oh, come on. Why is the lounge closed? I wanted brunch. I can't find who's talking. Were they under me? Medical center sealed. Seems unfortunate for that kind of place. Hmm. esteemed guest. If my hello were any more earnest, this loudspeaker would explode. Oh, oh dear. I'm sorry, but you don't seem to have a registered room key. If you've lost your key, why don't you pay the hotel concierge a visit? I'm sure she can get you a new one. Then you can come back and I'll service all of your vertical needs. Your vertical needs. So they've got hard security on that. You're not getting around without a key. Bertie Holcomb is likely beside himself in grief. If you can't use the elevator without a key, that potentially narrows us down to a, a fixed list of potential suspects. Unless somebody could just fly up like the bounty hunter changeling in Attack of the Clones and then put very slow moving worms in her room <laughs> for some reason. That could be easily dispatched by a last second rescue Jedi. The murder has inflicted severe emotion. I demand a room up. I've always wondered what that mascot's got in his hands. What's in the box? What's in the box? What mascot? Join us for the Prophet of Probability Seminar. Flyer promoting the Producto Therapy Seminar with renowned Prophet of Profitability Jasmine Leiva at her retreat in the Wilderness Explo Exploitation Reserve. Under her patent system, purge your body of nefarious humors and you'll never laugh again, stopping you from unlocking your true poten productive potential. Oh, that guy. What do you got in the spooky box? I'll bet you ten bits this is all just some sort of publicity stunt. Nah, she dead. This thing glows like an interactable. With Halcyon Helen gone, does that mean Spencer Woolrich will get all her roles? 
I certainly hope not. That man doesn't even act as well as I do. Wow. You, you, did you flub that line on purpose to emphasize that you're a bad actor? The crime scene's awaiting, Inspector. Can't believe something like this could happen in my hotel. When I found her, I was just hoping she had a little too much to drink, but all the grievous bodily injury adds up, I suppose. She was lying in a pool of blood, and your first thought was, I wonder if she's drunk? Hey, Byzantines and restraint aren't two words that often go together. Wouldn't be the first blood-soaked, unconscious party gore I've come across. Anyway, I'm sure you've got questions. Did you see Helen on the day of her death? Of course I did. I just told you I found the body. Oh, wait. Uh, you mean when she was still breathing? Um, uh, no, no, of course I didn't. Plus, it's untoward for an employee to speculate about the actions of a hotel guest. Not that I saw any hotel guests interacting with her. I think we both know that you're itching to gossip. Honestly, you're more than a little right. <laughs> I've been burning at the britches to share my theories. Day of her death, I saw Helen leave the hotel premises with the profit of profitability, and didn't see her come back. Little on the suspicious side, I think. Seemed especially strange, seeing how, as far as I was aware, the two didn't get on. What's the deal with the profit of profitability, she had guessed? Uh, yep. Gives seminars on increasing profit margins and the like. Can't say much else, seeing how I ain't in the gossip market. Why didn't Helen and the Prophet get along? As far as I can recall, Helen dismissed the lady's seminars in some kind of interview. Said her co-star used them, but she didn't. The top rungers are always ready to read between the lines of famous folks and seem to think the Prophet was on her way out. Woman lost a ton of bits and is set to lose more. I hope all that helped. I'd like to be as useful as I can in the investigation. I just didn't want to steer anyone the wrong way. You want to give me more details on how you came across the body? Sure, I'd taken to checking the barroom every few hours prior to the unveiling. Just to make sure no sprats had snuck into the place. You understand. Found her right before I was set to head back to my room in the lower levels for my mandated five-hour sleep period. Tell ya, thank the law for caffeinoid. Been too upset to get a wink of sleep since. And hey, now I can finally see smells. Oh no. <laughs> did you kill Helen? You can tell me if you did, it'll be our secret. What? No! Just because I found the corpse doesn't mean I made her a corpse. I was in shift all day. Besides, I loved Helen cereals. Well, the old ones anyway. The newer episodes are hot junk on a warm day. Ah, maybe she was a quantum being and you observing her made her a corpse in a Schrodinger's cat situation, making you the murderer. <laughs> no one talks about the murder accusation aspect of that thought experiment. Any idea why Helen would have been in the ballroom after hours? Beats all hell out of me. Maybe she was, uh, practicing for the unveiling? I'm just thinking now about the, uh, <laughs> the bad faith interpretation where Schrodinger's cat becomes a, tr a trolley problem. <laughs> sure. What's on your mind? Got any idea who might have wanted to do Helen in? Everyone's got theories. I don't reckon mine hold much more weight than anyone else's. And I guess that means you're not going to say one. Those jackets are a lot. How many, like, internal folds coming out do you need? And the straps over them? Usually all these details are supposed to make you look fancy and clean, but then you have, like, a bunch of work stuff that's all worn on over that. What a specific costume. Refreshments? Wow, it's more fucking vending machines. Welcome to my point of interest list. Give me experience, please. 
It actually didn't say that it gave me any experience. Am I at the level cap? 36? Probably not. That'd be a weird number. Black hole birdies disappeared, you know. The poor fellow must be inconsolable. Could have renamed this uh, entire expansion Black Holes and Revelations. I was nearly attacked by a terror ray on my way here. Wow, thanks for sharing, I guess. Birdie Holcomb is likely beside himself in grief. Happy customers are repeat customers. Wow. <laughs> oh, thank the law. Inspector, you don't know how relieved I am to see you. I was actually looking for the bar. Do they serve drinks with little umbrellas here? Our dossier mentioned you had problems committing to a job. In accordance with Rizzo's company policy, I am required to give you this motivational message. Uh -oh. I believe you will find that assisting your local Rizzo's security department is even more thrilling than the sweet, smooth flavor of Rizzo's Spectrum Vodka. Dr. Goodnight, ecstatic to make your various acquaintances and so on? Are we finished with the pleasantries? There's something I'm excited to show you. You said that so depressedly that it removed all of the fun of being annoying. What have you got for me, Doctor? An extraordinary contraption. You'll love it. Our coroner has developed a device which may prove useful in your investigation. Our office has instructed her to hand it over to you. Our office has instructed her to hand it over to you. Oh, please. You make it sound as if I'm turning over stolen goods. Behold, my discrepancy amplifier. Hold it in your hands. Feel the way it hums with ontological potential. Did you kill her so that people would use your invention? This looks like a scope modified with a computing device. I work with the materials to which I have access. Halcyon has no shortage of rifles. The discrepancy amplifier uses a deterministic model of our universe to detect the discrepancy between what should be and what actually is. Then it renders any discrepancies visible by using the power of magnification. This makes absolutely no sense. This is, they're trying to explain Batman detective vision, aren't they? Sounds like something the OSI teaches. Oh, goodness, no. I don't care for OSI doctrine. I just enjoy their math. I'm contractually prohibited from endorsing off-brand technology, but I'll bend that rule just this once. You'll want to peer into the amplifier and examine the crime scene. If you have a crime scene solver, why am I here? Greetings, Inspector. Thanks to the half-genius, half-mad scientist, scientific mind of Dr. Goodnight, you've been granted the discrepancy amplifier, a handy investigation device for uncovering clues throughout Eridanos. Be sure to equip the discrepancy amplifier into a weapon slot before you continue your hunt for Helen's killer. Because it's a weapon. Here we go. To catch Helen's killer, you'll need to use the discrepancy amplifier scope to search for clues naked, uh, not visible to the naked eye. Once you've located some evidence, aim directly at it while zooming in with the scope and press the button to analyze. Okay. Yeah, it's Batman vision. We're doing this. <laughs> We're doing this. Ooh, it's stinky in here, apparently. <laughs> The discrepancy amplifier is now operational. Greetings, designated inspector and or unauthorized larcenist. This unit has detected a discrepancy related to Halcyon Helen. Unscheduled expiration of. Begin amplification. She was clearly trying to write Rache, German for revenge. I see you've been designed with a modular analytical system. What else can you do? The discrepancy amplifier has been programmed with advanced speech recognition, scientific analysis, and deterministic calculus protocols. Oh, you'll love this. Amplifier, tell the inspector about your features. Please do not interrupt the discrepancy amplifier. The discrepancy amplifier is programmed to take instruction from its registered or designated inspector. How curious. I must have set its impertinence levels to flagrant. 
This unit's features include an automated personality simulator. This unit has been programmed to simulate joy and satisfaction in assisting you. Let's get started. Tell me about this discrepancy you found. This is a bottle of unreleased Rizzo's product. Helen appears to have attempted to use it to spell something as she expired, but all she managed was a sticky B. And what's the unreleased Rizzo's product? Rizzo's Spectrum Brown has not yet been released for consumption. Spectrum Brown was scheduled to be unveiled at the Eridanos Atmosphere Complex in partnership with Halcyon Helen. <laughs> what if the B stands for Spectrum Brown? Uh, I must identify this fluid as I die. Will she try and spell the name of the killer? This hypothesis is plausible, but requires additional information. Isn't Black Hole Birdie staying here? Correct. Birdie Black Hole Holcomb is a registered guest at the Grand Colonial Hotel. Anyone else I should know about? Accessing guest database B. The Grand Colonial Hotel is proud to serve the following VIPs. Bertie, comma, Black Hole. Burbage 3001. Make a note of this for later, Amplifier. This evidence has been recorded for later reference. Now generating pre-approved complement. Splendid work, Inspector. Or it's B for Bellhop. Might have right, right off the bat about it being him. <laughs> All right. Well, oh, it's twitchy and weird. Why is it doing? Oh, why does it do that? Oh, that's unnerving. It's like one of those living guns you had in like, uh, was it Prey? The original Prey? Did that have living guns? This footprint stands out from the normally spotless floor of the Grand Ballroom. Typically, the ballroom is cleaned twice daily, which means this must have been made by either Helen or her assailant or assailants. Taste the dirt. Oh my god. I'm all for taking pointless risks, but that's just disgusting. Discrepancy amplifier. Do the size of these footprints match anything you have on record? Footprint is a tailor made 8.75, suggesting that its owner was very particular about their shoe size. It is also the exact size that Halcyon Helen typically prefers. There are traces of dirt throughout the footprint. That's probably just hers. Amplifier, can you analyze the dirt? The dirt carries traces of fertilizer, as well as the faint signs of crushed purpleberries and grass. Grass, fertilizer, and purpleberries can all be found in the purpleberry orchards, located not far from the Grand Colonio. So Helen must have been at the orchards before she died. This deduction appears sound. Good work, Inspector. I had a feeling we'd make some progress once we brought you onto the case. You'll need Administrator Ludovico to grant you access to the orchards. Contact him through the secure access terminal in your penthouse suite. Check in with the concierge. Your room should be ready by now. If it isn't, I may have to go shake someone by the collar. Hmm. Good word, Inspector. You pointed a thing that we gave you at stuff and then read... And then it pretty much just told everything to you. And we didn't... And you didn't do any thinking. Samples would be built to your room. That's not what samples are. Now a 10% more packaging. Wow. In space, no one can catch you for littering. I knew I should have gotten her autograph when I had the chance. Staring at her won't bring her back, folks. I like you. Yeah, B for bellhop. Finally checked in, I see. I hope you're fond of the penthouse. It's pretty much the best seat in the whole hotel. You shouldn't want for any amenity you might find elsewhere. Should act as a better headquarters for the investigation than any space dust covered ship. That and you ain't got room service on a ship. You ever need anything, come find me. Even if you don't, you can still swing by. I'm always happy to chat. Don't have room service. I have five lackeys, a robot, and an AI. If, if they're not for room service, what are they for? Did you know the victim? 
Oh, of course. That is, uh, maybe not on a personal level, but I'm one of her biggest fans. Even started an association of like-minded individuals. I'd lament not having anything to meet about anymore, but the newer tribe just ain't done it for us. Still, there goes my hopes of a Terran Monarch reunion episode. The B for Bellhop character is the leader of her fan club. Only growing in suspect list. Were the newer serial episodes that bad? Of course. Budgets went up, but the writing quality chewed straight through the floorboards and free fell to Halcyon's son. I'm supposed to believe Helen would let the chief of the savages go free just since he was revealed to be her half-cousin? He's a dissident! You kill him! I, like most fans, reckon this series should go back to its roots. Another 200 episodes of the Origins plotline is what we really want. Now, what can I lend a hand with? Oh, jeez. You're in a distressing headspace. You have to kill them, even if your family dissidents must be expunged. Y'all will worry me. I'm curious about you. How'd you get to be a bellhop? Notice my battle-hardened physique, have you? Used to be in a mighty mean line of work. Been shot at 35 times. That is, um... I've been near people who were shot at 35 times. But, to be honest, I never really enjoyed it, you know? It's one thing to tightrope walk between life and death every day, but for just a handful of bits? Nah. When this position came up, I jumped on it and made a lateral move from sublight to slug. I ain't ever looked back. You were near people who were shot at 35 times. You know who's near people who were shot at? The person shooting them. <laughs> I thought Slug and Sublight didn't engage much. Had you moved from one to the other? Hmm, well, Slug is something like an offshoot of Sublight. It ain't too difficult to pivot from one part of the same company to another. Disconnects or no. That said, my departure may have been somewhat hasty. Did something bad and had to make tracks, eh? I know the feeling. I mean, yes, but I still earned Sublight a hell of a lot of bits. Basically, I singled out a ship to salvage that I thought had been out for use for years. As it turns out, it belonged to a wealthy Byzantine who used it only to vacation. As it so happened, I still don't think she tried to use it, too satisfied with the luxuries of Byzantium. Still, I figured it was a good time to turn tail, in case that ever changed. Got any good stories? You've seen a lot of people coming and going. Stories? Huh. Actually, I think I got a couple now that you mention it. Had a basket case visit from Fallbrook once. Almost took a swing at me when I tried to take his bag. Turned out to be full of live sprats. We charged him extra. How different is working with Slug from working with Sublight? Well, Slug is more trustworthy for one thing, where Sublight is all about back alleys and backstabbing. Slug can be trusted not to salvage your ship when you turn your head. Wow, what an honor. Might have asked you a few questions about the crime scene? Please do. Never mind. I guess that's all we got. I should check again to see if there's more with these guys. I left my favorite jacket in there. Headshot. Something I should know? I'd like to ask you some questions, Constable. Are you asking me these questions in an official capacity? Yep, got my inspector hat on. I understand you're being metaphorical, but I'm contractually obligated to remind you that Rizzo's cannot provide you with any official brand-associated headgear. Please, ask your questions. Who found the body? Norval, head bellhop. He was understandably distraught. I believe his feelings were genuine. He's a remarkably poor actor. Hotel security corroborates his whereabouts during the murder. 
I haven't included him in my list of suspects, but neither am I convinced of his innocence. What makes you say that? I'm a little suspicious of anyone who enjoys his job as much as Norval. He's also obsessive in his appreciation of Helen's work. Obsessive passion can lead to irrational behavior. It's a fact of modern science. Any witnesses to the murder? If there were any witnesses, none came forward. Ballroom cameras were also offline at the time of the murder. Helen was very particular about having cameras on her. Security footage would have constituted documentary filmmaking. Can't afford that. So no witnesses. How about the murder weapon? There's no sign of the murder weapon. Whatever it was that killed Helen, the killer took it with them. Frankly, I'm having trouble imagining exactly what it was that killed her. Any signs of a struggle? Was Helen armed? Helen was known to carry her signature weapon, a bespoke handgun known as the Needler. There was no sign of any such weapon on her body. Do you have any suspects? Spencer Woolrich and Bertie Holcomb are officially persons of interest in this investigation. I've mostly ruled out Mr. Woolrich, leaving Bertie Holcomb as my lead suspect. Let me rephrase that. He's your lead suspect. I've been instructed to turn this case over to your capable hands, while I continue to serve as a consultant. Your lead suspects are a star tossball player and an actor. I know. This entire affair is beginning to sound suspiciously like a two-bit serial. Mr. Woolrich was Halcyon Helen's professional rival. It's possible jealousy drove him to take Helen out of the picture. I apologize for the wordplay. Conversely, Mr. Bertie Holcomb was Helen's paramour. The relationship was reportedly dissolved. I can't rule out her murder as a crime of passion. You don't seem too sure about Spencer Woolrich. Woolrich thinks of himself as a serious and distinguished actor. He was frequently cast in demeaning roles, while Helen played the charismatic heroine. He has reason to be envious. I considered the possibility that Woolrich killed Helen in order to eliminate a rival and advance his own career. But my reasoning collapsed under closer scrutiny. Woolrich owes his career to Helen's dramas. Her death likely harms his long-term prospects. I'm struggling to determine a motivation for him, so I've largely ruled him out. What makes you suspect Bertie? Mr. Holcomb was in a romantic relationship with Helen. This alone is not enough to make him a lead suspect, but he does play tossball. Black Hole Bertie currently holds the record for most non-consecutive blows to the head. His tendency toward irrational and violent behavior is well documented. Please, ask your questions. Anything else? I've got some questions about the murder, unless I don't. You've got my cooperation. Why is it even let me open this menu? <laughs> Anything else? If we're going to be working together, I'd like to get you know, but get to know you better. I'm afraid I must decline. It isn't personal, Inspector. I'm just on duty right now. Talk to me later, after you've met with Administrator Ludovico. I'll make time to chat. All right, thanks. The Purpleberry Orchards. And a footprint. Inspector, that was absolutely marvelous. Beautifully deduced. With the help of my discrepancy amplifier, of course. I'd like a word with you. Ah, I was waiting for this. Yes, of course. I'm only too eager to cooperate. Tell me about the body. What's the cause of death? My apologies, Inspector. I've not yet finished my autopsy. Come back later? You didn't have time to do it before I got here? I, I wasn't even on planet when the murder happened. I'd like to know a little bit more about you. Oh, why I'm flattered, Inspector. Let me think. I've worked at the Grand Colonial for about as long as it's been around. Prior to that, I lived in Byzantium, but I always felt like it was missing something. And that something turned out to be corpses. 
Byzantium has much in the way of luxury, but examining the dead does not rank amongst the preferred activities of the elite. Uh huh. Sounds like you enjoy being a coroner. Absolutely. Usually I'm just a medical practitioner, so I almost never get to deal with anything as unique or as quiet as a corpse. The most interesting thing I saw prior to this was the back of Mr. Woolrich's throat after he blew out his vocal cords shouting at an attendant. If I weren't here, I'd be back in my quarters, rewatching Byzantium in the spring or working on my automatic sprat peeler. <laughs> I hate that thought. Speaking of inventions, I'm curious about this discrepancy amplifier. Oh, good. One of my favorite subjects. Ask away, my dear. Ask away. What made you invent the amplifier? Hmm. I didn't expect an existentialist question so early today. It's a need. Just as sprats feel they must breed, or canids feel they must brutally maul each other. I feel the need to create. What medical purpose does the amplifier serve? Seems like it's not related to your job. You're smarter than I look. Guess there's no shame in telling you exactly what it is you're using, seeing how you're so curious. As it so happened, my husband was mortally wounded in a marauder raid about a year ago. Wasn't going to live more than a few hours. I happened to have an excess of preservative fluids, a scanning device in need of a central processor, and a sudden burst of inspiration. A tragedy doesn't mean you can't be proactive. If your husband's brain is in the amplifier, I'm surprised you'd give it to me. Technically, it wasn't his whole brain, just a small cross-section, enough to operate the amplifier. But giving the amplifier to you is better than letting it rot in a closet somewhere. Besides, my husband was the prior constable. He would have wanted his brain used for the pursuit of justice. Well, this got very morbid. Uh, the amplifier seems pretty powerful. Why are you trusting me with it? Because you're the inspector. I should think that's rather obvious. I like the way you think, Doc. I can do what I want because I'm the inspector. Oh dear. You seem to be hearing what you want to hear rather than the words coming out of my mouth. Allow me to clarify? I invented the discrepancy amplifier to assist me in my own medical work. When you were hired to investigate Helen's death, I realized I had my own part to play. I programmed the amplifier to assist you. I'm entrusting it to your care because I want to see my invention help a brilliant inspector solve the murder of the century. And you want to be known as the inventor who helped solve Helen's murder. You don't miss a thing, do you, Inspector? I can see why the constable recommended hiring you. Think of the amplifier as my gift to you. May it avail you in the swift and efficient prosecution of justice. What happens if I break it or lose it or something? I still have the blueprint and several extra prototypes floating around, but I might recommend you try to be careful with it. Some of the amplifier's internal components are rare, shall we say. And I don't have an indefinite supply. Of your husband's brain. Uh-huh. You sure you don't want to know anything else? Oh, all right. We can change the subject. Oh, good. One of my favorite subjects. Ask away, my dear. Ask away. So weird that they just give you these dead ends. You sure you don't want to know anything else? Oh, all right. We can... We'll talk later. Yeah, it's weird that they leave the uh, they leave it open where it's like all oh, the things in this folder are clo are gone, but we still leave the folder there, just in case you want to just poke around a bit and be disappointed that there's nothing there. All right, we're all set to start our murder investigation. Hmm. Well, I suppose I've seen stranger marketing maneuvers. Not sure what Rizzo's was trying to accomplish with this one. Sir, a, a woman is dead. Mm -hmm. 